Gracias, bienvenidos todos y todas. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. My name is Tani Sarroti. I am the HR recruiter for uh, international placement at MTC, and uh, I will be leading this webinar presentation on international uh, service worker uh, leadership uh, position. Uh, first, we also want to thank you uh, for being here and also thanks to our panelists uh, for the time they will spend with us uh, sharing their uh, own stories as reps or former uh, AGs uh, as international service worker. So thank you for being here. So um, we will dedicate this uh, webinar to, as I said, uh, leadership uh, roles, uh, AGs and representatives and agen our our agenda uh, will be um, what is share with you guys uh, what is MCC, what is uh, to be a, a AD and reps um, international service worker. Um, we will have a panel of current and past uh, participants, uh, even uh, open to question for the panelists. Uh, we'll see briefly how is the application process. Uh, we'll share uh, with you uh, other opportunities. And finally, we will have a few minutes uh, for question and answer if we have some extra uh, time. So uh, let me share with you that uh, what is MCC? Um, M MCC is a Christian uh, nonprofit organization working internationally in three main areas, um, as you see. We work in relief aid, development, and peace initiatives. NCC works in Asia, the Middle East, Africa, and Latin America, um, as well in North America. In total, uh, MCC works in 51 countries with uh, 511 uh, partners. Uh, we work through local partners organization and build their capacity either through grant funding, education, training, or by placing a worker with their local organization. Um, let me share with you uh, too that uh, an international service worker are fully uh, funded volunteer. Uh, so, so what does it mean to be a uh, fully funded volunteer? It means our international openings do not pay a salary, but cover live expenses, uh, plus a stipend, uh, benefits, and other funds. Um, I will share more detail uh, with you in other, uh, um, a, a slide uh, later. So here we have um, a, like a, a official definition what is uh, from NCC, what is uh, to be a, a AD and reps a service worker. Um, uh, a, but briefly, an, an AD area director is responsible for uh, develop and implement strategies, priorities, and direction for their uh, region appoint and supervise MCC representatives and staff, and staff, provide oversight and evaluation for programs within their area, area of supervision, save as part of the program department senior leadership team, providing leadership and lead direction to the whole of international program among other uh, activities. This is the, the main uh, role uh, as a AD. AD. And we also have the MCC representative position, which is responsible for administration of the country program, including project st staff and office. It includes leading strategy, direction, planning processes, managing the country budget, supervising partners relationship, um, and with, um, holding the official relationship with governments of uh, offices and working with other agencies and organizations. I also want to mention that um, international service workers, ADs and reps are long-term uh, volunteers, MCC personnel, and pay, but fully funded, as I said before. Uh, these assignments are five years long. Uh, support for international service worker allows, uh, allows uh, for a healthy, mod modest lifestyle that reflects the values of our supporting and hosting communities. I also want to mention that uh, both roles, ADs and reps, uh, may fill with married couple uh, sharing the role with a single person or with a married candidate whose spouse is not interested in the area uh, director role, in which case uh, MCC would discuss possible roles, roles for the spouse. So, um, 
as we said uh, uh, um, before, uh, the service workers, uh, AGs and reps are, um, are fully funded volunteer and we have mentioned that they are unpaid, but we have a lot of benefit behind uh, uh, the service. MCC covers all travel, medical costs, food and living costs during term, monthly stipend, a medical, dental and vision cover coverage, school fees for dependent children, vacation time allowance, life insurance, educational loans assistance during service, retirement contribution, resettlement. Even we have a transitional uh, living uh, support, which is which is could be um, career counseling. Uh, you can consult this career counseling and, and they can help you to go back to the labor market once you finish the, your, your term. Individuals are placed into one uh, to four service worker levels in MCC, and this level will be based prior experience. So uh, the individuals can uh, fall in, in levels one, level two, level three, or level four, uh, depends on um, previous experience. So now we have we have uh, arrived to the, in my opinion, the most important part of the this webinar. Uh, we would like to share um, a, a, some experience from a, a, a service worker who are uh, serving right now and the former area director. I think I'm going to stop to share my screen so we can see the faces of uh, our panelists today. We welcome them. Thank you so much for, for being here. And the first things um, I want to say before you introduce yourself, I would like that my friends and coworker introduce herself. Uh, we work together in this um, work for MCC. Erica? Hi everyone, my name is Erica Van Essendorf, and as Danisa mentioned, um, we are colleagues and we work in recruitment and placing with MCC US. Exactly. Thank you, Erica. Uh, so again, thank you so much, Amela, uh, Kristen, and Neil for being here. Uh, we really appreciate the time that you are going to share with us. Uh, this is for me the most important part of the webinar. So um, we would like a uh, to invite you to introduce yourself. And also, uh, as you introduce yourself, we would like that you uh, share with us uh, wh where are you from and where are you located as well. I don't know if it's that okay that Neil, then Christine, and then Amela, is that okay? Yeah. Yep. So, so Neil, welcome, bienvenido, gracias por, por estar aquí. <laughs> yeah, hi everyone. My name is Neil Reeker and uh, with my partner, Elizabeth Miller, we are the country representatives of MCC Colombia, Ecuador. Um, I'm originally from Ohio uh, in the United States. My wife is from Illinois. Um, we lived in Colombia from 2009 to 2013 as service workers and then left Colombia for four years and returned in 2017 um, to take on the role as representatives. And we have two kids as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Kristen Chege and my husband and I are the co-area directors for East Africa and Sahel. So we're based in Nairobi, Kenya. Um, and we've been living here for about six years. So we took the position just exactly one year ago actually. Um, and we have four children. Wow, thank you, Kristen. Hi to everybody, Amela pulek um, from Bosnia and Herzegovina, I'm married to an American served with MCC for 17 years. Um, about 10 years was as um, MCC representative for Southeast Europe and then East Europe, and then seven years lost with MCC as area director for Europe and Middle East. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, so uh, Neil, would you mind to share with us uh, what it's like to serve in a leadership longer term service worker a, a role? What does it mean for you? I would say it's it's probably the, the hardest work I've ever had and the most fun um, at the same time. It's it's a little bit like running your own nonprofit. 
uh, without doing the fundraising because everything else as a country representative, you have to work, uh, uh, you have to know HR, you have to know finance, um, program vision and, and help promote that for the entire team and the partners, uh, communications, IT, uh, you have to do a little bit of all of that. Um, you also have to make daily decisions, uh, constantly making decisions that not only affect you, um, but affect team members. And we collaboratively, or we work uh, in collaboration to make a lot of the decisions, but ultimately a lot of the, the final responsibility is on, on us. But it's been uh, a wonderful experience overall for our family to, to serve in this role. Thank you. Kristen? Yeah, um, so I feel rather new in the role still, only having done it for a year, but I would say it has been full of excitement, <laughs> this being the, the year of COVID. Um, I think one of the, the greatest parts of it, though, is the fact that so we supervise seven different countries, mm -hmm. and so being able to experience the culture in those countries um, has been really, really rewarding. Um, and I think part of the thing that I love about particularly this role, and I think the rep role as well, is that we're able to really dive into the strategy. And so looking at, you know, the global strategy of MCC and then our area and then looking at each country as well and sort of seeing where things are going. Um, and then I would say as well, the work life balance has been really, really great for us. Um, I think in many jobs, you know, you can feel quite burdened with um, your pressure from supervisors and things. But I would say for us, it's been really a joy being able to work with our supervisors and feeling like we can take time and say like, you know, today I'm homeschooling the kids and, you know, tomorrow I'll really work on work. And um, mm -hmm. so for us, there's been a lot of balance in that way. Mm -hmm. um, Lila? Uh, Kristen and Neil really described it very well. For me, uh, either in a rep role or area director role, uh, the long term really meant um, understanding that I came after certain after the colleagues who served before me, and uh, I am leaving program to the colleagues to who came who came after me. So there is a really a uh, presence of a of a of a people. So I am not the. It's not my show. It's our show. So we're all together mm -hmm. in it. And I am taking, I took over and built on, created some new stuff together with the reps that I supervised and worked with. And then new people came on board and they continued that. That's really lo the longevity to understand that, that MCC role that I had did not start with me and did not end with me, but it was actually a continuation. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really also an understanding of strategic goals um, for the whole MCC as well as uh, provincial regional offices and seeing how that fits within particular area that I supervised at that time, uh, working with the, with the reps, reps uh, quite closely and in collaboration and cooperation. So that I would, that would summarize for me, the first question. Mm -hmm. Thank oh. you so much, Amela. And, and the next question, um, what experiences uh, have been the most impactful uh, uh, or what experience have you taken with you to your current work or life situation today? Yeah, for me, there's always two things that are the most impactful. And one is to visit partners and to see the work that our partners are doing. And the other one is working with our team. Um, so our partners, like the way that we are structured as MCC Colombia Ecuador is that we work directly we support the projects of the partners of the Anabaptist churches in Colombia and Ecuador. We do not have any of our own projects. We are here to support in whatever way possible the work that's already going on. And it's always encouraging to go to visit uh, a partner. For example, I just had my first trip in almost a year uh, visiting a part partner outside of Bogota where I live. And I was able to go to the Choco uh, region and I was able to see a place that had been working for eight years to produce chocolate, um, to give other opportunities of uh, employment in the area. And I was, I was able to be there for the, um, the start of the chocolate factory. And that was uh, such a powerful experience to think about the long-term vision of the churches working in their context um, and to see it, see one step move forward. 
The other thing is working with the team. Um, I love the team that we have. We have 16 people currently uh, in MCC Colombia, Ecuador, and they're from six different countries right now. Uh, and the diversity that is brought by our team brings a lot of energy and excitement and it's all around shared goals and values, but the way that we live those out are different from our different contexts, different personalities. And it's really fun to, to work on creating a team identity together uh, with our team. And we're actually in our first team retreat in a year as well due to the pandemic. So we are enjoying being back together after a year of being apart. So, Neil, Neil said it well, I would say as well, it's the partners and it's the, the team. And so then looking at it from the area level, um, my team is my colleagues that are also area directors. So there's five different regions. So um, within Africa, we have our region and then there's the other half of Africa. And so us two sets of ADs work quite collaboratively, the four of us. Then of course, there's the same in Asia and then there's ENE and then there's Latin America. And so um, we have, meetings with our close colleagues, um, with our Africa colleagues, and then again with the larger IP directors. And I would say those meetings have been so inspirational to see others that are further on in their career. I feel like I can learn a lot from them. Um, and also just the ideas that come out of those meetings and then being able to see quick changes that happen. I think that's something I've been very surprised at with MCC is just the nimbleness of the organization. And so, that, that for me is my team. And then as well, my team that I'm supervising. And so we meet monthly with every country office that we supervise. And those team meetings as well, I'm blown away by the people that I'm working with, people that have PhDs, people that have been in the career for years, and then those who are very fresh and new as leaders and um, the variety of things that come to the table from those different people that have come from all different career paths and are now at MCC together. So. I feel honored to be a part of that circle, um, both the IP circle and the international program circle, and then my local Africa circle as well. And then as far as partners, so my husband and I sort of share the traveling um, because we have young children. And so right now, because of COVID, my husband is the one that's doing the traveling and I'm staying home. <laughs> so that's been harder, but um, I did get the chance to go to Uganda and similar to Neil, seeing the community, there's one particular community that we partner with um, that most of the people are affected by HIV AIDS. And so seeing the work that they're doing together with livelihoods um, and the change that's happened over time. And actually it's quite a success story because now MCC is pulling out of the community and they're able to continue on with the work that they're doing um, with other partnerships. And so to really see that as a celebration in this time uh, has been has been really rewarding for us. I think I will repeat what um, Kristen and Neil have said. Um, well, you learn in MCC when you're serving at MCC that the world is actually small um, and uh, it's, it's huge, it's large, it's a lot of people, you know, the globe is enormous, but actually it's small. And you and what you learn is that the people are essentially the same. They respond to kindness, they respond to love, they respond to care. They really genuinely respond to you caring genuinely for them. Um, and the, and the, 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 uh, the participants, beneficiaries that um, MCC reps and partners were in contact with or working with are absolutely wonderful people who have found resilience in the midst of the hardest moments in their life. Like in Syria, for example, when I traveled to Damascus or to Aleppo, or to Homs and Hama, the destruction was unbelievable, but the resi resilience of the local people to be able to rebuild their houses, to be able to plant their fields, to be able to organize themselves to actually create humanitarian organizations so that they could actually deliver food to those less fortunate in their own communities was incredible. Um, the local partners are amazing people who, who have their local experience, local knowledge, local learning, and um, as an MCCers, we would come along, share what our experience or knowledge we have from Western parts of the world, but share with an understanding that we are invited into conversation, not um, impose, but actually dialogue, actually share and combine experiences and knowledge and learnings to create something that would 
be contextually appropriate and fit perfectly to what partners need, to, to what participants need, to what beneficiaries need. And I always appreciated that approach with MCC, not imposing, not power over, but actually walking with and power with. So I continue to carry that as an important, uh, really part of MCC service. Um, and also when you will be applying for the position and talking, and if you eventually uh, are in position, the key word that I would stress is flexibility. And we all, yeah, sure, I'm flexible. Well, actually, no. <laughs> you will learn in a position that you can be really stretched. I mean, I have been stretched. It has been enormous growth. And uh, the challenge is to understand that growth as an opportunity and not as a test and not something that uh, I need to fight, but actually a ch uh, an opportunity to find about myself, who I am, but also the people that I, uh, that I am working with. Is that a local partner? Is that, uh, um, are, is, are those reps or service workers that I have been uh, supervising? I would stress the importance of understanding the intercultural ongoing growth in MCC service, um, that, that intercultural awareness, and it changes one forever. Once you do that, you're just not the same person and not the same person for a good reason because you made a choice to actually go and experience and live in another culture. Um, and I, I hope uh, you will have a, a joy as the three of us really have a joy and the two colleagues serving and I served before. So. Thank you, Mela. Uh, we have talked very, very quick about the benefits. Uh, so uh, this is la the last question. How have you been supported uh, during your service time? Yeah, as you said, Danisa, um, some, you mentioned some of the financial ways that, that were supported. And I've always say that you're not gonna get rich uh, with MCC, but you're not gonna lack anything you need. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, it's such a privilege to live in that situation and it allows you to give your stress and your energy fully to the work that you're doing. Instead of thinking about, if I get this medical test done, I might not have enough to pay the rent. You don't have to think about that. Medical's covered, the rent is covered. And you can just really focus on your work. And I think that's, uh, I know it's a huge privilege, um, but also a great benefit that MCC provides. Um, socially, you have your team. Um, we actually this year have gotten much closer to the people in our apartment complex due to yeah. um, COVID restrictions. Thank you, Neil. I think for us, we've seen the support from you know the very beginning, orientation all the way until now, and I'm sure until the end. So um, even a part of orientation, like our kids were a part of it and had their own specific program for children. And so feeling like the entire family was a part of MCC was really important to us. And I feel like MCC absolutely accomplished that. Um, and then taking it then as we entered our position, you know, our team, I felt like was very, very gracious with us and supported us as we were learning our new role in the same way our supervisors were there. It was like, there was never any question that couldn't be answered and there was never a wrong question. <laughs> and so that grace I feel like has extended yeah. um, and MCC is a very learning focused organization. And so never did I feel like I couldn't, you know seek more understanding. There was always a learning posture as we've gone through this. And so I feel like for me that was highly supportive in addition to these other benefits. Mm -hmm. I'll just uh, build on what uh, Kristen said. Um, the, the support really came from the uh, representatives that I worked with, uh, from my program directors who were supporting me in my work, who were my direct supervisors. The support came from the board, from executive director. It was one really of a very encouraging and supporting environment. Also, MCC is very much open for people to have a debriefing if they need to have that kind of an outside of the organization listening ear that will give them a certain level of freedom to really, um, you know, manage any kind of levels of stress that they have and, and counseling. And that has been very important uh, support to MCCs across the world, regardless of what level of uh, service worker you are, that is always available um, to, that was available and continues to be available to all the service workers across the world. Mm -hmm. And of course, MCCers have a lot of fun and good sense of humor and partners as well and beneficiaries and uh, participants that you will visit, that you will hopefully have a chance to to meet personally. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you so much, Amela, Kristen, and Neil. Um, for the sake of the time, we would like to ask the audience if they have uh, any question for the panelists uh, or for myself. Uh, I don't know if, if somebody is interested in asking a question. Maybe they, uh, you can unmute yourself and, say and ask the question. We allow or, or people type time type to, to ask questions. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe just for each of you, if you had one piece of advice that you would give to someone who is thinking about considering, or yeah, considering a, a leadership role with MCC, what would you say to them today? Neil, I think it's your term because you were kind of leading us into that. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I lost you there for a second. Um, but I finally can can follow up with what you said and say my colleague said it very well, I'm sure, on the support. Um, no, one piece of advice, I'll, I'll just say that likely there's never an ideal time to do it, but if it's something that you are interested in to make it the ideal time, because um, if you're waiting for your kids to get a certain age or till you meet a different um, life, uh, different like life stage, um, you likely will never end up doing it. And I think it's worth, worth trying. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that discretion process is really hard. And I, I think for myself, there was a lot of searching within my community. And so reaching out to my community to say, what do you all think? And does this seem like a position that fits me well? And kind of sussing that out with my family and my close friends and my, my church community as well. Again, building on what they said previously, I would just say, just do it. Um, when you do this search, uh, searching within yourself and with your family and uh, your partner and children and the community, um, do it. Um, I, I hope, um, it's it's a lot of um, it's a, it is a challenging it's new um, but it's so so worth it you really become a better person a better human being and I think you all of us I think become a better faith practitioner in our own life and in our own community. Okay, I have I have just one question here in the in the chat I I, I write it down. Um, it says, uh, is it easy for family and friends to come and visit you while serving international with MCC? Let me answer very briefly, um, and maybe um, the panelists want to add something. Uh, I would say that the answer is yes, uh, but we highly suggest not to do it the very first year because um, the service worker are concentrating in learning a new language, uh, recognizing the area where I'm going to live in, a, a cultural adjustment. They had to meet their um, partners, look for a school in case it's a, it's a couple. So yes, but we highly recommend not the first year. Am I right? Uh, Christine, Neil, or Amela, you have another answer on that? Do you agree with that? It was extremely easy a year ago. Um, this last year was very difficult. Okay. Okay. For us, at least. Okay. Yeah. Somebody wants to add something else? Well, okay, I but think the answer is yes, I think. But yeah, the, 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 the answer is year... absolutely, absolutely yes. I mean, these are the people okay. that support you, that love you, that care for you. Um, yeah. And it's wonderful that you can show them around and share actually your life experience. And then they take that together uh, to their to your community basically and share with your family friends in your church um, but the, the timing is really important and absolutely agree with Danica I think first six to eight months it's just so many things coming um, towards you know, towards you that you just you're trying to actually culturally adjust yourself uh, to understand to learn the language to get you know get the get the basics and once you once you start to feel like oh I can swim in this um, then yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, our uh, all panelists, for being here, for sharing your ex experience and your time with us as well. We hope that this experience encourage others to, to, to serve with MCC in the near future. So thank you so much for, 
for accepting this invitation. So thank you, Kristen, and Neil, and uh, Amela. Thank you oh, so much. Thank you, my pleasure. Okay, we are in the very first last part. I'm going to share my uh, screen very quick. Um, let me, uh, it's about the um, registration and application. I'll do it very, very quick. Um, we have like a, two process of uh, uh, registration and application. You register yourself uh, and you can do it for a general interest or find a position you are interested in. When you find a position that you are interested in, there is a confirmation and follow up with us, with the HR uh, uh, recruiter. Um, so we, as a HR recruiter, we collect um, a, resumes, um, cover letters, and if we think that you are a, a good fit for, for the position that you are interested in, you will have to complete a full MCC application, which includes a short essay on Christian faith and understanding of the biblical call to nonviolence and belief about military training and participation in war. Then we collect references uh, to reach the final stage, which is the interviews. Um, let me say something uh, um, uh, that is very important. The application process is a little bit long. Um, so we suggest people that uh, they start to look in between six and nine uh, months before, before they, want to, they want to start. So, but more information you can get, you can get it here in the, in, in the link. And finally, um, just let you know that um, uh, there is more opportunities with MCC. You can join some of our other MCC and me webinars. We have one more coming up uh, talking about domestic cutting position. Um, uh, also, please head to mcc.org serve for more information how to apply. Um, uh, finally, we have a long-term uh, leadership international opening, short-term domestic opportunities, and occasional domestic salary position available as well. So we are finally at the end of our time, and we want to thank you all for attending this uh, webinar. We hope that this information is very useful for, for, you, for you all and help you to consider to be a service worker with MCC in the near future. So. So we thank you, we thank you the panelists, my coworker, uh, Erica, for uh, helping us with this webinar. And thank you so much all and have a very, very good afternoon. Thank you.